Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, or, or good evening. Um, thank you very much for joining us for this uh, introduction to Jordan's Hidden Gems webinar. Um, firstly, I'd like to, uh, to just do a quick introduction um, to the team that we have here today. Um, firstly, myself, I am uh, Simon Hemmings. I'm the um, head of a team for the UK and Ireland. Um, with us today as well, we have Scott Bush. Um, Scott is our head of team for North America. Um, and we also have Jill Siebert here as well today. Um, Jill is our head of operations uh, for Europe, um, based out of our office in Munich. Um, for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with us um, and DMC Reps, we are a sales and marketing representation company. Um, we um, uh, so we aim really to connect our DMC partners with uh, tour operators from around the world. Um, we have around 50, uh, 50 partners um, covering around 70, uh, sorry, 60 countries um, around the world. Um, one of which is, uh, is, is with us today um, from Jordan. Just a couple of little bits of, of housekeeping. Um, we are recording this webinar, um, which would allow us to send this out to, uh, to yourselves at the end. Um, and uh, it'll also uh, give us the opportunity, anyone who couldn't attend as well, uh, we can send it out to them. Um, if you've got friends, colleagues who might be interested um, in, in the content here today, um, please uh, pass that on. Um, it would be fantastic to, uh, to get a, a broader reach um, the second uh, bit of uh, housekeeping, we have a chat function here today. Um, at the end of the presentation, um, we are going to do a quick Q&A. So any questions that you have for um, about the presentation or about Jordan or Jordan and beyond, please type them into that chat and we'll pick that up at the end. Um, so without further delay, um, what I'd like to do is to introduce you to our guest speaker today, um, Musa Halal from Jordan and Beyond Tours. Um, uh, Musa is going to, uh, to talk to you today um, about um, Jordan's Hidden Gems. Um, and I'm just now going to hand over the hosting um, so, that, uh, so that Musa can, um, can share his screen um, and share his presentation. So over to you, Musa. Thank you, Simon. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody from Amman. Um, it's a lovely uh, opportunity to speak uh, to every single one of you. Uh, just allow me one second to uh, get the presentation ready, please. Sorry for that. Just. A second. Uh, my name is uh, Musa Hilal, and I'm the uh, uh, CEO of uh, CEO of Jordan and Beyond Tours, a destination management company that is based in Amman, Jordan, serving the travel needs all over the Middle East. Uh, thank you uh, for giving us this opportunity uh, to speak in front of you. I hope it will be a very fruitful, uh, short presentation about the hidden gems of uh, Jordan. Of course, I won't make it a uh, boring presentation, so I have to be a little bit quick since we are talking about a whole destination. There are lots of attractions, but um, I think we are going to focus only on the main uh, gems that we suggest for this presentation. I'm pretty sure that every one of you knows uh, Jordan and uh, knows where uh, the location of Jordan is exactly. Uh, I'm pretty sure that some of you have been here in Jordan and some of you are considering uh, why Jordan. Uh, uh, very quickly, I think uh, Jordan can be attractive destination for everybody due to its location, uh, due to the fact that Jordan is a hub of arts, uh, culture and history the safety, the friendly people, the hospitality uh, of Jordanians, uh, the highlight uh, of Jordan, which is the food, actually Jordanian food is part of the Mediterranean 
food which is a very uh, authentic, diversity, uh, very fresh. Uh, so, uh, so many reasons why, why uh, uh, to visit Jordan or why to consider jo Jordan. Um, as you may know, uh, quickly, there are six unit, six UNESCO heritage sites in Jordan, which are Petra, Wadiram, baptism site, uh, Amra Palace or Qusayr Amra, Omar Rasas, Assalt. It's easy to find out why they have been considered as a UNESCO heritage sites. We are not going to talk about this uh, in this presentation. And also again, very quickly, there are five pilgrimage sites by Vatican, Mount Nebo, uh, Bethany beyond the Jordan River or baptismal site, Makairos or Makawer Fort, Om Qais and Billa. Again, it's easy to find where they have been uh, considered as a pilgrimage sites by Vatican. Uh, so let's uh, go directly to the uh, selected hidden gems of Jordan. Uh, actually, uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is the uh, Petra, but not Petra itself. I want to talk about the possibility of visiting Petra from the back door. Most of the clients visit Petra from the main door, as we all know, uh, uh, but uh, very little of them start the day from the back door of Petra, which means uh, we take them to uh, Beda area uh, and they enter the site from the other side. Why visiting Petra from the back door? Because it gives an opportunity to the guests to experience passing through uh, agricultural areas and over uh, rocky terrains, affording hikers spectacular views of the Wadi Arava before arriving to the monument, which is in front of you now, which is uh, Al Deir. Al Deir in Arabic means the monastery. So actually, it's kind of a different experience. It uh, gives different flavor of, uh, of visiting Petra. We want to consider this and we consider it as, as, as a gym uh, in Jordan. Second one is Tal al Hammam, which is believed to be uh, the destruction of the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, which according to the description of the Torah, stones and fire fall on them from the sky. And because of the fires, Thick smoke uh, rose and all the inhabitants of the two cities died. Of course, lots of scholars, researchers, and even biblical travelers like to visit, to visit this site, which is only uh, 15 to 20 minutes uh, drive from the Dead Sea and an hour from Amman. This is something else to be considered as a hidden gem and uh, something that not lots of people know uh, about it. Next, we, uh, I'd like to talk about Shoba Castle, which is uh, located on the way between uh, Amman and Petra. It's part of the King's Way, which is mentioned in the uh, Holy Bible. Why Shoba Castle, uh, which was built in 1115 under the rule of uh, King Baldwin the I? Uh, because it is an enchanting castle. Uh, and visitors can explore the churches, the historic ruins, and the secret passageway that leads the, uh, to the charming water springs uh, in, in the uh, uh, lower area of the uh, castle. And also, uh, there are lots of uh, things to see in the castle, like the watchtowers, the catacombs, and number of Christian uh, carvings, and also an Islamic aspects and Islamic tables. Next, I'd like to talk about Qasr al-Abid. Qasr al-Abid means the palace of the slave. This uh, site is located on the outskirts of Amman and only 20 minutes uh, drive from Amman. Uh, 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 this is an impressive uh, palace, which is a mystery at the same time. Uh, it's uh, one of the very uh, uh, few examples of the Roman constructions in Jordan. Most scholars believe that Hyrcanus of the powerful uh, Jewish topia family built uh, this palace sometime between 187 to 175 BC as a village or fortified uh, palace. Uh, of course, standing in front of this palace is uh, different from uh, uh, seeing it uh, on a picture. It's a huge, it's massive, and it's very artistic. Next, I'd like to move to one of the most intact castles, desert castles in Jordan, which is Qasr al-Kharrana or Palace of Karana. This is a local name, of course. Impressive structure and very intact. 
it's a very uh, nice place to visit and very close from Amman, maybe 45 minutes drive from Amman airport or from Amman city. Uh, the city, uh, the sorry, the, uh, the castle itself is in the outskirts of the desert and very well preserved desert castles representing the example of the early Islamic art and, uh, uh, Islamic art and architecture. Uh, actually, it's a very photogenic uh, place for uh, photographers. So let's consider this uh, also in our next visit to Jordan. Next comes the uh, abandoned French fortress. Actually, this fortress is not old. It's only uh, something like uh, 20 to 30 years old, and it was built by uh, the TV show producers, which we all uh, know, the French one, the Fort Boyard. Uh, the French fortress is even weirder from closer. It was actually designed to look very ancient and very weird, very weird. Uh, uh, it, can be, it can be visited as part of the Jeep Safari tours that we uh, run and we operate in uh, Wadi Ram uh, Desert. Next to that comes Assault City, which is 20 minutes west of Amman and which has been recently uh, chosen as a UNESCO heritage site in Jordan. Uh, actually, why Salt City? Uh, it's one of the oldest cities in, in Jordan and it features a very long and various uh, stages of history. The highlight of the city is that visiting, it gives the visitor the uh, opportunity to get the sensation of the true Jordanian life, especially strolling uh, in its old streets, uh, the downtown, the old uh, shops, trying the street food there. Uh, it's a very nice place with a very uh, different hiking uh, trails, you know, a uh, few museums there, the uh, opportunity of having uh, a meal, lunch or a dinner with the local family or having a meal in one of the old uh, restaurants of the uh, city. Let's move then to the Kingsway, which is a very uh, old, uh, aspect. Uh, actually, this, this Kingsway connects uh, Egypt with the upper Euphrates. It passes through Sinai all the way to Aqaba, Petra, then, the, then to uh, uh, Madaba and Mount Nebo, uh, all the way to Jarash and Bozra in Syria, and it, it continues up to uh, uh, Euphrates. The King's Highway was uh, uh, rebuilt by Trajan, the Roman Emperor, and it was called Via uh, uh, Triana Nova. The highway has always been used as an important pilgrimage route for the Christians, as it passes uh, Mount Nebo and El Maghtas, which is the baptismal uh, site in Jordan. Uh, at the same time, it's a very scenic road that connects uh, Middle and South of Jordan. Lots of tourists drive from the way stop uh, for photography or for having a cup of uh, coffee or tea with the locals. It's a very nice experience that I'd like to recommend. After that uh, comes Lot's Cave, uh, which is located only uh, 10 kilometers east of Dead Sea on the outskirts of the Dead Sea. As we know, Lot is uh, the nephew of Abraham and uh, the site is uh, featured repeatedly in the uh, colorful annals of the Dead Sea Southern Shores. Uh, Lot's cave is where, Lot's, uh, where, where Lot and his daughter are said to have lived after fleeing the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Actually, it's um, uh, a, a mountain cave with a church that was built in the fifth and the, the sixth century overlooking the uh, Jordan Valley, the Dead Sea, the West Bank cities. Uh, it, it also holds the lowest a museum in uh, the surface of the earth. I like it, and I like to uh, 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 to bring this uh, this gem or this site to light because uh, it's really an iconic one. After that, let's speak about the Aaron tomb. Um, Aaron is the brother of Moses, and we refer to Aaron as a prophet in the Islamic uh, religion and Islamic uh, culture. It's located on a peaky mountain of Petra Hills. Visiting the sites, of course, needs special arrangements that we do. It involves uh, uh, lots of hiking, uh, climbing the mountains, you know. It can be done by walking or it can be done also by um, donkey riding, which we don't uh, recommend because 
Jordan and Beyond is trying to uh, encourage visitors all the time to travel green to uh, support animal uh, animals rights. Uh, actually, reaching this this peak or this uh, tomb will give an amazing view of Jordan Valley, Petra Mounts, the West Bank uh, Heights. Uh, uh, in addition to the uh, story that stand stands behind behind this site. Uh, little Petra and Siq al uh, Little Petra is a small miniature of the main site of Petra, but in a different theme, different spices. Siq al means the cold narrow canyon. It's a small narrow canyon, uh, also a small miniature of the big canyon, which is part of the Petra site. Why this site? It's located 10 minutes away from Petra, very close. Uh, and it used to be an agricultural center, trading suburb, and support, uh, uh, and uh, sorry, resupply post for camel caravans visiting Petra. The area is very picturesque, and uh, it's very quiet, not lots of tourists, uh, many uh, 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 things to see and to visit, to learn from. Uh, it gives you an opportunity for some uh, quietness, you know, having a cup of coffee with locals uh, as well. After that, Wadi bin Hamad, and this is the local name. Uh, as you may know, Wadi in Arabic means valley. Uh, this is a very long valley that extends from the hills uh, close to Madaba village all the way down to the Dead Sea with uh, water streams and water springs. The Wadi is a very uh, wonderful way to explore the diversity of landscapes in Jordan. It's suitable for all levels of experiences and adventures, such as uh, hiking through the narrow canyon, uh, admiring the uh, waterfalls, hanging gardens, vivid green palm trees, and lush vegetations. You simply can spend a full day there doing lots of different things. Uh, and at the same time, it's uh, very reachable and it's, uh, it, it gives a very pleasant uh, taste of the time. Next comes Karak Castle, which is again another uh, example of big castles in Jordan. It was built in 1142 AD by the Crusaders, and it was used later as a Mamluk fortress. Uh, it's another popular castle in Jordan especially for, for, for being one of the largest uh, in the country, containing a museum, plenty of rooms, stables, church, uh, dungeons, and dark chambers, as well as narrow pathways and low uh, doorways. Again, it's a very panoramic on the top of uh, high mount, gives you, uh, uh, gives you a, a view of Karak City and the surrounding areas. Another gym in Jordan is Al Ma'wa Reserve. Al Ma'wa means refugee, exactly. And this animal reserve is the first of its kind in the Middle East. Uh, uh, it focuses on the uh, promoting the wildlife conservation, restoring the life of the uh, extinct animals of the region, and providing shelter for the animals in need for care from the surrounding countries, countries which are under uh, political disorder. Uh, like uh, Syria, Iraq, Gaza, and even Egypt. It, it gathers the animal that needs uh, shelter from those areas and it gives them uh, the needed protection and needed uh, life support. This reserve is only 40, 40 minutes from Amman. It's located uh, close to uh, Jarash city and uh, can be combined easily with any activity uh, that are available in, in, in the area. Next, the cave bar, which is actually a bar in a cave. The cave is 2,000 years old, and it is in a Patean cave uh, on the entrance of the Petra site exactly. Actually, it is uh, uh, worth it to visit this cave bar while being in Petra. I think it should not be missed. Uh, having a drink there, of course, it serves alcohol and local drinks. Having a drink there will give you a sense of the history. Will um, uh, will travel will travel you into another uh, era. I think this is something that you should not miss while being in Petra. You can have a dinner or have a drink there or spend some times. It's uh, a different experience to to be in one of the oldest bars in the world. 
Next, I'd like to talk about the Wild Jordan uh, Conservation Center, which is located in one of the old hills in Amman, overlooking the Citadel Mount of Amman, the downtown, the Roman theater, uh, operated by Royal, uh, Royal, uh, uh, Royal, uh, uh, Royal Conservation Nature uh, Conservation Royal Nature Conservation Society in Jordan. I'm sorry for the misspelling. Uh, actually, the, the the center aims to produce an income for the rural communities in Jordan and for those who live in the eight uh, natural reserves that are in Jordan. Uh, it serves uh, uh, local drinks, local food, and uh, actually. Uh, supporting this place means supporting the local communities. At the same time, it's it's a nice place to chill out at the evening time or the afternoon time in Amman. Uh, it's an iconic place in Amman, honestly, and I like uh, this uh, site to come under light. After that, I want to speak about Amra Palace or Pusair Amra, which is again one of the UNESCO heritage sites. Why? Because it's because of its unique fresco paintings, of course, uh, this uh, uh, this palace uh, used to serve as a hunting station, uh, relaxing stop for Muslim caliphs or rules in the past. Uh, uh, it used to be as a, a unique uh, hot path. Uh, it can be combined with other desert castles, but the location of uh, the the palace in the middle of the desert. And having a look at the Vrisco paintings, which is uh, something like 1,000 years old, is uh, 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 a different experience, especially for uh, artists and people who are uh, uh, running a passion of, of arts. This is a very nice place that I would recommend as well. And then we come to the Royal Automobile Museum, which is uh, and located in Amman. The purpose of establishing this museum is to feature the history of the ru uh, ruler family or the royal family in Jordan from the early 1920s all the way uh, to the present day. The cars exhibited, exhibited in this uh, museum belongs to the royal family from the uh, King Abdullah I all the way to King Abdullah II, who is the current King of Jordan. Each uh, car represents, uh, by, sorry, each era in Jordan uh, is represented by uh, a car in the museum. Uh, it's, it's a different uh, experience that can be found in Jordan. Lastly, I want to speak about the Finan Ecology, which is located on the outskirts of Arava Valley in a wadi or a valley called Finan Wadi. It's considered as one of the best 25 ecologists in the world by the National Geographic Travelers Magazine. The award winning, it gives the visitors the chance to practice different types of uh, experiences and activities run by the local community. And uh, staying an overnight there actually is a very different and unique experience where there are no electricity, there are no power sources, a uh, secluded area, quietness, you can uh, 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 watch stars at night, which is really uh, a, very, uh, a, very, a very good experience to, to give yourself an escape for one night or two nights. Maybe. Here we come to the end of our gyms. Uh, let me speak slowly, uh, so, sorry, shortly about Jordan and Beyond, which is a destination management company established like 13 years ago in Amman and it serves all uh, needs uh, of travelers in Jordan. Uh, we uh, can cater for group tours, uh, tailor-made holidays, event management, online bookings, transportation and rental, hotel bookings, uh, visa handling, local experiences, combined tours, special interest re requests. All, all what is needed can be achieved and done by our uh, 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 tour operator. Uh, I'm pretty sure that the contact details of Jordan and Beyond will be passed to you by my colleagues at the MC Reps. I, I've chosen one uh, main product to speak about quickly here, which is our daily group tours that are operated on daily basis in Jordan for five days, all the way up to 11 days, and in five different languages, English, French, German, Italian, 
Spanish, along with one weekly uh, group tour that is uh, operated in English language. Of course, we accept bookings from two guests, two guests minimum. Solo travelers are always welcome to check with us on any time. We do this on uh, B2B and B2C basis, of course. Uh, B, B2B is a commis commissionable uh, business for our uh, partners. There, there's a process that I can explain in, in, in another time. Uh, we sell all kinds of hotels, uh, three stars all the way up to the five stars. We can accept bookings by emails or online through our online platforms. And those tours are guaranteed all uh, year round. The last thing that I want to speak about is the fact that Jordan and Beyond is a go green company. We are trying hardly here to implement a sustainable travel policy. Uh, we encourage our clients to travel in Jordan sustainably and travel in a green way. Upon arrival of our guests to Jordan, we update them with our uh, policy. We give them our recommendations. We help them to travel uh, green in Jordan. Uh, of course, the policy is the policy is very long and the various uh, you can uh, have a look at this policy through the uh, QR code. Uh, and at the same time, we can exchange emails and uh, discuss this uh, 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 policy more. Uh, at the end of the uh, presentation, uh, this is all what I can say in the time given to me. Again, thank you for your, 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 your time and for giving me this opportunity to speak in front of you. If you have any questions, I'll be glad uh, to answer it. Thank you very much. Excellent, thank you very much, uh, Musa. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, and, and just to re-mention it, because there were one or two uh, that, that missed the, the, the opening statement, um, there's a chat function at the bottom of the page. Oh, it's at the bottom of my page, I'm sure it's at the bottom of other people's pages. Um, please type any questions that you have for Musa, um, whether that's about the presentation and the hidden gems, um, or Jordan in general, or Jordan and beyond. Um, please, please use that chat function, um, and we'll just monitor it for a couple of minutes. Um, Scott is going to uh, to have a quick quick read through um, and uh, and pose any questions to to Musa. Um, and I am just going to go back to share my screen. All right, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Simon. Thanks, Musa. Um, of course, one of the first questions that is on everybody's mind is, how do we get into Jordan with all of the travel restrictions uh, related to COVID? Uh, can you give us a, a quick overview of what the, what the restrictions are, if any? Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, part of our uh, English website, we update the uh, COVID-19 travel regulations to Jordan on regal, uh, regularly basis. We can share this with uh, any of our guests. We can even uh, direct you to our website and you can get enough information. Actually, uh, uh, regulation in Jordan are kind of easy. Uh, uh, the, uh, the government in Jordan has taken a very major and serious steps to almost vaccinate everybody here in Jordan. So we started vaccinating children from five years and above. And uh, officially they say that 95% of Jordanians are vaccinated and they, are, they started giving Jordanians the third shot for the time being. I myself will go through it within the next couple of um, uh, days. Uh, a huge uh, protection procedures have been taken here in Jordan in terms of social distancing, uh, mask usage, uh, in terms of uh, uh, monitoring uh, the workers and the travel uh, se sectors like hotels, tour operators, transportation companies, restaurants. The government is very strict when it comes to this and everybody must be too, uh, two times vaccinated and they uh, they have to apply a regular uh, negative PCR test from time to time. Uh, I, think, I think it's very well uh, uh, regulated. Regarding the entry regulation to Jordan, it's very easy for the European and the North American market. Uh, since you have two uh, shots vac vaccination, you need to register on a platform that already is part of our um, uh, COVID-19 update. 
uh, get a negative PCR test done 72 hours before arrival, and that's it. Upon arrival to the airport, uh, you need to get your Q QR code or registration form with you. Our airport team will be waiting for you inside the airport before the immigration counters, and they'll be the first one to see in the airport. They'll take care of you uh, fully. Uh, while being in Jordan, uh, uh, procedures by the government and, I, uh, and also by the tour operators uh, have been taken to make sure that everyone will have a safe trip to Jordan and uh, a relaxing one. I hope I answered the question fully. Yeah, that was good. And um, for those attending, we'll make sure that when we send you out a follow-up, uh, with this information uh, and the recording of this webinar, we'll make sure to include all the uh, current and up-to-date uh, COVID information. Uh, well, of course, of course it, will, it will be part of, of, of our emails to uh, the guests and uh, it will be done. Okay, um, great. All right, our next question. Uh, when, with regards to Aram's tomb, you had mentioned that it was uh, possible to hike up there or uh, to take a donkey, although that was not, not as advisable. If you're hiking up to Aaron's tomb, what is the, uh, the, the recommended fitness level? Uh, Actually, it needs, it, it, needs, it needs a good fitness level. It needs someone who is fit, who can walk for a long time, uh, three or four hours, who can climb the hills, you know, who has a certain uh, degree of endurance. It's not convenient for the all the people or for the uh, not physical people. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the outfit or the outlet, the conclusion is worth it, believe me. But um, again, uh, animals can be used. I personally don't recommend this, but it's up to the guests. If, if using animals, it becomes easy because uh, Nothing to do, you just need to, to ride the donkey or, or the camel. Uh, but if walking, yes, it needs a high level of uh, endurance and a certain level of physical ability, yes. Okay, all right. Uh, do we have any other, any other questions? If you have any questions, just type them into the chat box. Okay, uh, I right. can't see any more coming in. Uh, oh, no, one more. Sorry, it's got one more. Go. One more. If you're visiting Al Salt City, uh, Al Salt, Al Salt City. <laughs> yes. Let's say you, Salt City. You, should you stay overnight? Is it worth staying overnight? Actually, Salt itself does not have any chain hotels. There are just a few local uh, hotels. Uh, it's only 20 minutes far away from a man. No need to stay in assault. But if the guest would love to stay there, we can uh, uh, arrange one of the local uh, small hotels there, or or we can arrange uh, for a homestay. It's possible. But again, bear in mind that it's only 20 minutes far away from a man. Okay, so it's it's an easy day trip from a man. Very easy. Yeah. Okay. Um, and a question about crossing through land, crossing, I guess, crossing by land into Jordan, I guess, is that? Uh... Yes, let me speak a little bit about uh, borders. Uh, usually the, 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 the tourism business income is combined between Jordan, Israel, and Egypt. Uh, we know that Syria is closed for the time being. We used to do combined business with Syria and Lebanon, but not, for any, not anymore because nobody goes to Syria nowadays. Uh, with Israel, there are three land borders, one in the north, one in the middle, and one in the south. Uh, actually, uh, the combination of the business between and Jordan and Israel used to be huge. Jordanian borders are open for the time being, but Israeli authorities are closing the borders for any entry. They allow people to leave from Israel to Jordan via land borders, but they don't allow them to come back. So what we do nowadays is that we encourage all our partners to start the tour with Israel landing in Tel Aviv airport, then finish the tour uh, by land crossing to uh, Jordan and fly out of Amman. This is what is done and this is the uh, best case scenario for the time being. Uh, we don't know how long the borders will be closed by the Israeli authorities for entering Israel only again, they allow departure from Israel uh, by land borders. 
We don't know how long this will take, but we hope that it will uh, be waived uh, very soon and borders will be open because uh, uh, lots of business is uh, waiting the borders to open. Uh, with Egypt, we don't have land borders, but we have uh, sea borders. Uh, and there are uh, several uh, ferry boats and the speed boats that connect Aqaba port with Nuweba in, in Egypt and with Taba as well. And at the same time, for those who do not like to go through ports, boats, they can cross to Elat and then to uh, Aqaba quickly. It's very uh, close to each other. They are very close to each other. And in the uh, normal uh, situations before the pandemic used to be very quick. Okay. All right, we'll take uh, one last question before we sign off uh, with, again, another question about COVID protocols, leaving Jordan, getting out of Jordan. Uh, but uh, like with the United States, for example, we'd have to have a, a, a test to be able to yes. get back into the United States. Um, how do you guys, are you able to assist with that? Okay, first of all, there are 40 uh, licensed labs in Jordan in addition to the hospitals. Those labs are only licensed to do the PCR tests for clients, regardless the purpose of the uh, test. Uh, we have a full uh, COVID-19 team here in the company that assists every single client to get his test in his room in the hotel before leaving Jordan. We make sure to give this test in the hotels, and 24 to 72 hours before departure and the results are issued within a couple of hours and sent to the clients by emails with a hard copy by our airport team upon departure. So the PCR test before departure is something that we should not worry about because we handle it completely. Uh, the charge of this PCR test is $40 per person and it can be covered by us and included in the invoice for our partners, or it can be paid by the clients directly to the lab people uh, against an official uh, receipt from the uh, lab. Okay, excellent. All right, we'll wrap up the Q&A here and uh, Simon, we'll turn it back over to you. Thank you very much, um, Scott. Um, and thank you all for, for attending today. I hope you found that insightful, um, interesting, um, Musa. Thank you so much for joining us and, and, and taking us through Jordan's Anytime. Hidden Gems. I certainly learned quite a lot, um, so I, I hope, hope others did as well. Um, just to, to remind, we will follow up. We will send, uh, the, uh, send the, the webinar um, to you via email um, over the next couple of days. Um, and, um, and, and if you have any questions, that you do want to ask, um, if they pop in your mind when we've gone offline, uh, it's absolutely fine. You can just respond to our emails um, and, uh, and, and we will pass them on to, to Musa. Um, also, if you'd like to, to learn more about Jordan and beyond, uh, please again, ask us. We're always happy to, to connect you with Musa. He's, he's keen to, to meet new, uh, new tour operators and, and go into new business. Um, and, and that's what we're here for. Um, so that brings us to a close. And um, if there are any additional questions pinging up, which I can see one or two, um, we'll pick those up and, and we'll answer those via email. Um, so thank you very much, all of you, for, for joining us today. Thank you.